Hello, in today's video we will be going over how to assemble the AB motor mounts and the front idlers for the gantry on a Voron V2.4. So again, for these videos, the manual has not come out yet. So the order of operations will be slightly different potentially uh, when the manual is out. However, if you do follow these video guides, this will show you how to successfully assemble the components of your Voron V2.4. So we're going to start off here with the AB motor mounts. Now, while they do look pretty close to each other, uh, they are in fact mirrored and there are some slight variations. Um, I'll show you how to assemble one of them. The other one is pretty much the same, just the opposite. So the first thing we're going to do is grab the top portion here. Now to distinguish between the top and bottom component, the bottom component has an M3 screw hole and an M5 screw hole whereas the top component has two M5 screw holes here uh, for where it attaches to the uh, belts for Z motion. So take the top component and the first thing we're going to do is take our M5 by 30 millimeter button heads and we're going to put these in. There and there. And then you can see here we have a large gap and a small gap. The small gap gets one bearing, the large gap gets two bearing stacks. So we're going to build up our smooth idler stack. So again, for the Voron 2.4, all your idler stacks consist of a one millimeter washer, two bearings, and a washer. And then we'll do this again here. So washer, bearing, bearing, washer, and then another washer, bearing, bearing, washer. Okay. And then we will screw the two halves together. Now, at this point, you are screwing into plastic. So you just want to screw these in enough that the screw head bottoms out and that will keep it in position. There are other screws that actually hold these two components together with force. These are just to hold your idler stacks in position. There we go. Make sure everything moves freely. We take our NEMA 17 motor, put that in position. I have the wires coming out the back. You can have them come out the side, however you wish to do your cable management. And then take our M3 by 30 millimeter screws, put those in. And screw these down. There you go. Make sure your idlers still spin freely. And then we need to install our 20 tooth gear. Now, take a look at the back. On one side, you'll have two sets of idlers that line up and one by itself. When you install this 20 tooth, you want it to be in line with the set of two. So on this side, the 20 tooth will be installed like this. On the opposite side, it will be like this because you'll have the pair of idlers on the bottom. So we'll just put that in position. Now, of course, when you are installing this properly, you are going to use a thread locker of some sort on your set screws to ensure that the 20 tooth does not loosen, that the grub screws stay tight. So for example purposes, I'm just quickly putting this on and there we go. And then when the module assembles to attach it to your extrusions, Simply slide them into position, make sure they're flush. And then you would use the appropriate T-nuts and screws to screw them to the extrusions. So that is how you assemble the A and B motor assemblies for the Voron 2.4 printer. So next I will show you how to assemble and install the front gantry idlers as well as attach the Z mounting blocks. So starting off with your front idlers, the first thing you need to do is build a idler stack out of bearings. 
And what I am doing is I'm actually building this on a little uh, spare piece of M5 dowel I have here, about 30 millimeters long. Uh, this is a little trick I picked up on how to assemble these. And I'll explain why in a moment. So if you do have uh, something that you could use to build this on, like a, a dowel or a screw with the head cut off, for example, will work. Um, this makes this step a little bit easier because what we are doing is we're building a idler stack and we have to assemble it between the two halves of the front idler. And then we have to put the tensioning arm over top and put a screw through it. So if you were to try to assemble this while you feed the screw through, um, it can be done, but it is a little tricky because um, the washers have a tendency to go on adventures. However, if you assemble it on a dummy pin here, you can simply line everything up, push your screw through, which will push the dummy pin out. And there we go, all assembled. So when you are assembling this, you need to ensure that you have the correct sides together. So with the MZBot logo in the front, you should have on each side uh, a mismatched pair of screw holes. So again, M5 screw holes on the top and an M5 and an M3 on the bottom. So again, we take our bearing stack, put one side in, put the top half on, press together. Then we take our tensioning arm, which we have installed a heat set insert. And the heat set insert faces towards the back. And then you need to ensure, because these parts are uh, mirrored, that the one with the socket head cap screw hole on the top and the hex on the bottom is on the correct side. So if you have this the other way around where the hex is up and your set screw or heat set inset is facing the back, you have the wrong one installed. Push that through again. Then we take our M5 nut, put that in. Screw the two halves together. Now we don't want to tighten this too much as we want to ensure that we don't bind up our idler. And there is movement here because this is how we tension it. So now we take an M3 by 40 millimeter screw. We're going to put a washer on it put it through the front and screw it into our heat set insert. And this is how we tension your AB belts. And there we go. So now it's a single point of tension instead of the two screws on the 2.2. So you don't have to worry about it uh, racking at all. And lastly here, I will show you how to install your belt clamps as well as the Z mounting blocks. Now this is the same for the idlers and the AB motor mount. Here, so we'll take our front idler, and we'll slide that onto our extrusion. And you wanna ensure this is flush. Now I already have my T-nuts installed. Again on the bottom, you have an M5 and an M3 on the top. We have two M5s. Now the top one is simple. The top one, you feed the belt through. And then the belt would come out here and go up around your idler and back down through this clearance hole here. The little notch faces outward, so away from the print area. The reason for that is it allows the belt to come out and then a length of it to come back and be zip tied to the vertical belt. This allows you to save some extra. The extra there is very handy if you ever have to take the printer apart for maintenance. Um, it's much easier to work on when you have a little bit of extra belt. You don't want to cut it flush here. So the top portion is where you would store any excess belt. And then these are screwed down with M5 by 16 mil screws. And that's how you clamp the top belt into position. Now for the bottom one, this one is a little bit more involved because this also has your Z mounting blocks. So if you notice on this portion here, we're going to have to do a little bit of prep work. So the first thing we're going to do is install an M5 nut. Now again, what I normally do is I'll put a small drop of super glue on these 
just to ensure that they stay in position and they don't go wandering. You'll see why later. And then we take our belt clamp block here and put that on top. And then we're going to take an M3 30 mil, put it in like so, and an M5 30 mil. This has to be a button head. Put those in. Now, when you, you would feed your belt through at this point, and then this would clamp it into position. Screw these down tight. And then we mount our mounting block to the carriage. So as this is a mating surface, and there actually is a small pivot point here, this allows your gantry uh, a little bit of flexibility when it comes to leveling and tramming out the gantry to the bed. So it's not much of a pivot point, but there is a little bit of play here. So you do want to ensure there is no binding points. So what I do is I just kind of rub the two halves together just to make sure there are no little burrs or nubs of plastic. And then what I do is I actually just wet the one side ever so slightly uh, with some super lube or another grease that doesn't react to ABS. Um, simply because it is a mounting point, I do like having a little bit of lubrication there uh, just to remove any potential friction. And then we take an M5 by 40 millimeter socket head screw, put that through, and this will screw into that captive M5 nut we have in there. Now you're gonna to wanna to screw this down tight, but not obscenely tight because you do want to have just the ever so slight amount of play here at first. And this will allow a pivot point for your gantry. Now this can be adjusted later. You essentially want it so that there is no Z movement, but you do want just enough that it can pivot ever so slightly. And then once that's assembled, you would screw this to your Z carriage like so. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you are using the Hall Effect end stop, there is one of these components that will have a small cutout here, and that will be for the magnet that you will need to install. And that will be looking at the front of the printer at your back right part. So underneath your motor mount there is where this will go, the magnet, for the Hall Effect end stop. If you're not using the Hall Effect end stops, you don't need to worry about printing out that individual unique uh, mount there. So that is how you build and assemble the gantry idler, your AB motor mount, as well as the carriage mounting blocks for the gantry on your Voron V2.4. Thank you for watching. If you do have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. I do hang around for a while in the comment section, so any questions that are posted there, I'll do my best to try and answer them. Also, there are links to the Voron Discord on the below linked Voron Design website. The community there is extremely helpful when it comes to helping you build a Voron printer. If you would like to see more content such as this and some of the other projects I am working on, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, along with all that other YouTube analytics stuff that every YouTuber asks you to do. Hope you have enjoyed watching these videos. Um, I do enjoy making these and I'm glad some people do seem to enjoy these and they are helping people get their Vorons built. Thank you all and have a great day.